Welcome to J Sorry. Welcome to Jamie's Vinyl Hideaway. Now I've been wanting to do a show about cowbells and rock and roll for a long time. I mean, we could all use more cowbell, right? But before I get started, my lovely assistant cannot be with us today. She has become the mask-making queen of Middle Tennessee. She's home making masks day and night. People are making masks, dropping them off at her house, and they're shipping them out from her house, and different people are coming to the house, dropping off, picking up masks. There's masks going everywhere to, to protect the people of uh, Middle Tennessee. And this is uh, one of the really groovy masks that she made. Uh, it's got some comic books on it. This is uh, the pattern for the, the kids and the uh, big kids like me. So anyway, I'm on my own today while my lovely assistant is making masks. So, oh yes, and there was a comment by uh, Golden Vinyl Spin, which is a YouTube channel, like a father-daughter uh, channel where they collect records and talk about them and, and the father builds turntables and whatnot. And one of them commented on one of my uh, previous videos about my jukebox and they wanted to see the inner workings of, of the jukebox. And uh, I'd like to do that one day, but unfortunately I can't find the key to the jukebox. So until I find the key or break into it somehow, uh, I won't be showing the inner workings of the jukebox, but thanks for that question. So what can be said about the clapperless cowbell? Yes, clapperless. This would be a cowbell with a clapper, but who needs a clapper? Take that clapper out and just whack it with a stick or a mallet or some other implement of destruction. The cowbells were very popular in uh, salsa music. And then somebody got the great idea to strap one of their suck those suckers to the drum kit and use it as a, just a percussion instrument in addition to the rest of what you have on your drum kit. And you could have like a really small kit like Ringo Starr did in the early days. And he had a cowbell and he was using it and you can hear it in the song, I Call Your Name. It showed up on the Beatles' second album. In the UK, it was just on an EP. But here in the States, it was on the Beatles' second album. Unfortunately, I don't have that album, so I can't show you. Uh, yeah, I know, I should have that album. What, what, what's wrong with me? But anyway, Ringo Starr, knocking out the cowbell. The rest is uh, maybe set the stage. I don't know who started using cowbells in rock and roll, but is cowbells and uh, incense and peppermints. Matter of fact, it's the cowbell that probably sets the stage for the hi-hat at the end of the second verse. You know, it was a little pause, and you're expecting to hear that cowbell again, and there it is, the hi-hat. It's a really cool part of the song for some reason, and all it is is two little snaps of the hi-hat. But without that cowbell to set the stage for what was to come later, I don't think it would have been the same. Of course, uh, Strawberry Alarm Clock was on Uni Records, same label that the uh, Elton John was uh, on way back then. Ah, Jimi Hendrix, Stone Free. Now you know that song. Lots of cowbell. Mitch Mitchell on the drums. I'm going to assume that the drummer's playing the cowbell here. That might not always be the case, but hey, let's uh, put a little spotlight on the on the drummers. Mitch Mitchell on Stone Free. Uh, of course, uh, Stone Free was produced by Chas Chandler, Jimi Hendrix's manager, Chas Chandler from The Animals. And uh, my grandmother bought me this album. Not this exact one, but this album way back when, when I was a kid. And I, I abused my records back then, so I had to replace them all. And this is one of the replacements. And it came with a poster. Now, when I had the original album, it didn't come with a poster. This was a later issue. Stone Free wasn't on when any of the studio albums, the three studio albums that Hendrix put out when, when he was alive. It appeared on the Smash Hits album. And this is the poster that came with it. Is uh, Mitch Mitchell, Noel Redding, and Jimi Hendrix brandishing weapons and riding horses. Something I'm sure they were quite familiar with. And... Uh, yeah, I know. But the uh, nice poster. 
I want to keep this in nice shape, so uh, let's hope I don't bend it up putting it back in haste. Honky Tonk Woman. Oh, yeah. Lots of cowbell on Honky Tonk Woman, right? It starts the whole song. Was a single for the Rolling Stones. Didn't show up on any of their studio albums until it showed up on this Greatest Hits album. Through the Dark, Through the Past, Darkly. Through the Past, Darkly. Eh, big Hits, Volume 2. Yeah, I know. Who shapes a, a record uh, sleeve like this? But hey, it's a nice gatefold cover. And uh, might not be great for the record. Uh, how do you put the sleeve in there? I, I think I cut the corners off of this one to, to avoid having to fold them. London Records. Good record label. My first uh, Beatles, uh, my first Rolling Stones album was Hot Rocks. My grandmother also bought me that. And at one point in the record, it, it skipped. So she brought it back to Sears or whatever she got it and got another one. And it skipped in the same exact place. Turns out it was my cheap turntable. Didn't like a certain quality uh, record manufacturers, London being one of them. Maybe the grooves are really deep and the stylist wasn't getting in, so it skipped. But anyhow, Deep Purple. Deep Purple Mach 1. I uh, did a show on Deep Purple Mach 1 versus Mach 2, and I played a little bit of Chasing Shadows. Chasing Shadows has uh, got cowbell in it. Uh, Ian Pace on drums. They even go as so far as to mention Ian, who has heard playing drums, timbales, maracas, and cowbell. Tetragrammaton Records. Mach 1, Deep Purple's third album. Self-titled. But, oh, I know what you want to hear. That. Yes. The quintessential hard rock cowbell song. Mississippi Queen by Mountain. Corky Lang on the drums. Of course, Leslie West lead guitar and Felix Papillardi on the bass. A whole bunch of New Yorkers playing some hard rock and roll. And here's Mississippi Queen. Mississippi Queen, Mountain Climbing, on Windfall Records, an independent, great album, Mountain Climbing. Leslie West's first solo album was called Mountain. I guess they figured, hey, let's make a band called Mountain and start doing some records. 1970, I believe this came out. Mountain Climbing. Uh, also from 1970, The James Gang. James Gang Rides Again, second James Gang album. And a James Gang had a, their first album had a song called Funk 48. So on this album, I guess they decided let's uh, do a song called Funk 49. Jim Fox plays the drums. And uh, ABC Records. There's a little uh, percussion break in the middle of that song, where I suppose everybody's playing percussion, so I don't know who's playing a cowbell. Let's see if I can pick that up here. Right about there somewhere. No, not there. A little further back. Here we go. Ooh, it's a vibra slap, too. I think Joe Walsh is due for a solo album. What do you think? A solo album, I said. Yes, absolutely. You know what I mean. James Gang rides again. So even Jethro Tull. Jethro Tull has got freaking cowbell. Barry Moore 
Barlow, the drummer for Jeff Rotel, second drummer on this album, Minstrel in a Gallery. I'm going to assume he's playing the cowbell here, and I'm going to give you a little uh, taste of that. Martin Barr, the guitar player, does a uh, guitar introduction to this song, and right toward the end of that introduction, we're going to hear the cowbell. <laughs> Just hits the cowbell twice but that's all you need you know you gotta you know set the stage you don't want too much cowbell you know too much of a good thing is not a good thing right minstrel in a gallery great album by a great band that i love jeff rotel grand funk railroad we're an american band lots of cowbell Oh, well, by the way, this Grand Funk Railroad and the James Gang album, I got from uh, Spinner's Records here in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Got a pretty good price uh, for these two records. It's become my uh, go-to record store. Gold vinyl. When it was issued originally, it, it was issued on gold vinyl. Now, I have a really sad story about one particular... Wear an American Band album. Back in the 77, 78, when I was going to school in Phoenix, Arizona, a good friend of mine decided to, he was kind of bored with the with Grand Funk and uh, wanted to see if that record would, would break. Yeah, I know, right? But apparently they don't break very easily. I don't know if it was thicker than this one. This is not terribly thick. I don't know why they don't break. Maybe there's a different sort of plastic they're using. With the, with the gold vinyl at the time. But uh, it wouldn't break like the other unfortunate albums that uh, did break against the wall of destruction. Unfortunately, I wasn't there that day to witness such horror. But I believe the, the Grand Funk Railroad album wound up on the, a neighbor's roof. And it's probably still there to this day, all melted on some roof in, in Phoenix, Arizona. Little Donnie Brewer from Flint, Michigan, playing the drums on that one. Ah, psychedelic cowbell. Time has come today. The Chambers Brothers. I bought this album when I was in Phoenix, Arizona. But the first time I heard it, I was working for a roofer when I was in high school. Back on Long Island. And you knew I was into music and rock and roll and whatnot. He was a little older and... He was like, oh, Jamie, check this out. His name was Artie. Artie was like, oh, this, this song used to drive my mother crazy. She'd be banging on the door to turn it down. 11-minute song, Time Has Come Today. The uh, extended version. Of course, it was a big hit, a single. And I'm going to try to pick up where the... Uh, where the uh, instrumental break begins, about three minutes into the song. Ah, here we go. Cowbell on Pigs on the Animals album. Lots of cowbell on Animals. Have some really cool black and white pictures here. Might be my favorite thing about the Animals album. But hey, there's some really good stuff on it. Some cowbell, Animals, 1977. The song Pigs. thing 
about this. This is like probably the first R&B album I ever owned. And of course, this isn't quite an R&B song, is it? But but basically, they were an R&B band, very versatile, did lots of different stuff. And there's some really great uh, songs on this. All Strung Out Over You is another great song, also has Cowbell. Time has come today. David Bowie, Rebel Rebel, Cowbell. You got some Cowbell on uh, Rebel Rebel, kind of like a high-pitched uh, Cowbell, maybe? Soprano Cowbell. I'm making that up. But anyway, this would be the album that uh, David Bowie released just after uh, disbanding the Spiders. Mick Ronson left to go uh, play with Ian Hunter, who had recently uh, left Mata Hoople. Oh, I forgot to show you, there's no uh, dog genitalia on that particular cover. They had, uh, they had airbrushed out the, uh, the dog genitalia. Apparently somebody was offended. So it maybe it was part of uh, David Bowie or it was distracting, I don't know. But I'd like to find a copy with the, uh, the unedited cover. Diamond Dogs. 75, was it? Yeah, I think so. Which leads us to another album from 1975. Now, I was just listening to this album, Slade and Flame, by the band Slade. And uh, lo and behold, there's Cowbell. Warner Brothers Records. I wasn't looking for Cowbell, but there it was. You're going to hear Cowbell everywhere. I think there's lots more cowbell out there than I really know about. And this song here is OK, Yesterday Was Yesterday. And they go on to say that today is a better day. Well, I'm going to say uh, yesterday was yesterday and tomorrow's going to be a better day, which it is. Mark me well. So here we are, Slade on Warner Brothers Records. Slave and Plan. Now, Slave and Flame was a movie. Came out in 1975. Apparently it was popular in the Midwest, but they had to, uh, they had to dub it, because, uh, it's hard to understand these guys when they're speaking, if you're an American like me. Ah, yes. The soothing sounds of Naughty Holder. That's all. That's all I got. Now I know you uh, probably know thinking of some cowbell songs right now. Make a comment on my YouTube channel. Tell me uh, which which songs I missed, and maybe uh, maybe I have them, and maybe I thought, oh yeah, right, cowbell. But anyway, make a comment. Click that little like, thumbs button, uh, subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. And uh, that's it. Be safe out there. Wear these masks. They're not so bad. Ah, here we go. Yes. Lock up your daughters. Anyhow, that's it. That's all I got. Having fun right from the start. That's what Naughty Older would say. That's all I got. Did I forget anything? No, let's see, Artie, you got the roofer, you got the, yep, I got them all. So, please be careful out there, protect your neighbors, and later, man, move it.